Office. Bom dia. Bom dia. Aqui é Moro. Do Milão. Do Milão. Do It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to Rhodes University, to Gramstown, Makanda, to the Eastern Cape Province, and of course to the 2019 Heltasta Annual Conference. We wish to extend a special word of welcome to our guests from distant parts of our country and beyond who are visiting Gramstown, Makanda for the very first time. To all of you, I extend a very warm Eastern Cape welcome. Nam Kelegile, Husekaya Nalapa, Kunlani Baiki, Nonwa Begunyanati. We thank Hantasa for entrusting us with the responsibility of organizing and hosting this important annual conference. Our sincere thanks also go to our local organizing committee for organizing what I'm confident will be a very successful, intellectually stimulating, and memorable conference. I also want to take the opportunity to extend a very, very, very warm gratitude to Kirsten Wilmot, who I'm told was and trusted with every part of organizing this community. Kirsten, well done. <laughs> On behalf of our university and the local conference organizing committee, we wish to acknowledge with much strength and sincere appreciation our eminent keynote speakers who have graciously accepted our invitation for them to address this conference. <laughs> We also convey our profound gratitude and heartfelt appreciation to all conference presenters for their time and effort in preparing their presentations for this conference. We are equally grateful to those who will be presenting their presence. This conference would not have been possible without you. On our guests, ladies and gentlemen, this conference is held, this conference held under the theme Pedagogies and Contents, takes place at the backdrop of the momentous events of 2015 and 2016, which shook the South African Academy <coughs> to its very core. The National Student Protest of 2015 and 2016 raised questions about the value, the purpose, and the role of higher education in the context of a developmental society. This conference takes place at a time when our public institutions of higher learning are engaged in animated debates and robust discussions on decolonization and transformation. In one of the meetings we had with student leaders in 2016, we were told in no uncertain terms that students demanded a free, decolonized, decommodified, Afrocentric, intersectional, and socialist education. I'll not attempt, I'll not even attempt to unpack these concepts. I will leave it to all of you to engage them during this conference. Central to the issue of transformation and responsiveness are the key, key questions relating to what we teach, who teaches, how we teach, how we assess, what we value as knowledge, which scholarly voices are heard, and which ones are silenced. Recognition and appreciation of different lived experiences that students bring with them into the teaching and learning spaces, taking, taking cognizance of different learning styles of our students, recognition and celebration of diversity and difference, and harnessing these 
to create a richer and transformative learning experience for our students. Social and demographic composition of our academic and support staff. Daily discourses and the assumptions we make about each other. Alienating institutional cultures. Experiences of exclusion and how we treat each other and so on and so forth. Equally important is to interrogate what it means to be a university in a society in which grinding and debilitating poverty and inequality are at every turn. Are we sufficiently attuned to the challenges facing our society? Are we responsive to these? When we promise young people of our country and beyond access to quality higher education, what kind of knowledge are we creating access to? Do our curricula draw on wide and diverse epistemic cultures, traditions, and practices from different and diverse parts of the world? Or are we still privileging knowledge from some parts of the world to the exclusion of that which comes from other parts of the world? Are we privileging certain ways of knowing, certain ways of doing, and certain ways of being? Uh, how do we construct the teaching and learning space so that it can facilitate authentic and deep intellectual engagement where both teacher and student experience the vulnerability that is necessary for development and growth. These and many other pertinent questions require our urgent and considered attention. And we must respond imaginatively and creatively to the cry for the decolonization of the academy in general and that of our curricula in particular. While decolonizing the curriculum and embracing knowledge from diverse parts of the world is a first step to creating a rich and transformative educational experience for our students, we must not neglect to reflect and engage on the pedagogic philosophy and approach that underpin that curriculum. Equally important is the need for us to place our students at the center of the teaching and learning enterprise. We need to understand who our students are. We need to understand their hopes, their dreams, and their aspirations. And we need to understand their fears and concerns. You see, they come to us as 18 or 19 year olds with lived experiences. It is that higher knowledge that forms a reference frame for them that can help or hinder the acquisition of new knowledge. There's much learning, unlearning, and relearning that needs to take, that needs to take place for them. I think it is important that we move away from the deficit discourse that focuses on what our students lack. We must instead focus on what they bring with them and leverage that to create a more positive and transformative learning experience for them. We have an unprecedented opportunity fundamentally to rethink and reimagine what it means to be a university in a developmental state confronted by myriad of challenges equipped by centuries of colonialism and decades of apartheid. Insofar as the debate on decolonization is concerned, I must nail my colors on the mast. I do not subscribe to the notion of jettisoning one form of knowledge in favor of the other. I subscribe to the knowledge of decolonization, which rather suggests decentering what is generally referred to as Western knowledge and Western ways of knowing, and a concomitant embrace and affirmation of different kinds of knowledges and different ways of knowing. I don't, for a moment, subscribe to a narrow and an exacting notion 
that you must get rid of this and replace it with that. I subscribe to the unity of knowledge and that there is much to be gained in drawing from diverse knowledges. The young people who come to us as 18 and 19 year olds are the best that our system has produced. And we therefore do indeed have to teach those that we have and not those that we wish we had. We have much information about the academic performance of the young people in our higher education system and the high dropout rates. We must engage those issues relating to dropout rates and ensure that young people who come to our higher education system do succeed. At times I've been tempted to argue that no access, access without success is worse than no access at all. But that view has been tempered by the work which was published recently by Sue McKenna and others, who indicate that young people who have had access to higher education, even though they may drop out, they leave having acquired certain skills and certain competencies. So it is not all lost, but the purpose of being at higher education is to acquire the qualification for which they have been they registered for. Once more, on behalf of our university, I bid you all a very warm welcome to this conference. I sincerely hope that this conference will afford you space and time away from your theater of daily operations, critically to reflect on your work, and that it will equip and empower us with new knowledge and strategies and approaches that will help us advance appropriate interventions in terms of policy, pedagogy, and knowledge creation. We look forward to learning of thoughtful proposals and insightful interventions that will help us advance our cause of transformation and decolonization. I'm confident that the 2019 Health Asa Conference will provide you with an ideal platform and an opportunity to reflect and engage views, perspectives, and experiences and ideas that will deepen our understanding and broaden our knowledge on the power of pedagogies in context to liberate our society from the indignity of ignorance. Enjoy the tranquil surroundings, enjoy our tranquil surroundings and our modest facilities. I wish you stimulating, productive, fruitful and successful deliberations. May you at the end of this conference, I leave Rhodes University with a renewed sense of hope and, and optimism that tomorrow will be a better day than today. Asante sana, zikomo kwa ngeri ngatenda, thank you very much, and kosi. Gyaleboha, gyaleboha, merci boko, machoboza, bayatanke, obrigado.